in India, 1984, the Prime Minister at the time was assassinated. For many parts of the country, there have been scores of clashes. There was a lot of religious backlash. Our families were targeted. A lot of people were killed. Soon after, there were elections. Some of the things we saw as uh, you know, little kids were very shocking. Just the picture of somebody forcing you to vote at gunpoint. That was one of the big factors, and trying to figure out if technology can prevent things like that from happening. When the trusting government institutions go bankrupt, and there's uh, no alternative that can be found, whether it's in the government or in the opposition of that government, that trust needs to go elsewhere. That's a lot of trust, and people have trusted that system for many generations, and we've kind of lost that trust. So we see blockchain as a, the most promising vehicle which can help rebuild some of that trust. The founding principles of what you call the blockchain world today are in the Bitcoin white paper. And in this white paper, you can see that really the founding principle in some ways is related to decentralization and trustlessness. Votum is a blockchain-based mobile voting company. We figured the best approach to push this industry forward is to prove that you can run a large private election on blockchain. We got connected with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, who in 2015 let their fans vote on who was going to be inducted into the Rock Hall. They picked essentially an off-the-shelf voting system, and within a couple of days, the vote was hacked. We ran their election in 2016. We got a million and a half votes that run through our blockchain platform. They vote on the candidates by simply checking a box. Once that happens, they submit a packet of that vote that then goes out to all the nodes simultaneously. Each node then runs through this validation check. Is the voter a valid voter? Is that ballot a legitimate ballot? Did it come from an IP address so we know it's blacklisted? Assuming that all those independent nodes then come to the same conclusion, they talk then to another node and say, yes, this is legit, yes, this is legit, yes, this is legit. It's then written to the blockchain and it's tied to the previous vote before it. And that just continues to happen as the votes come in. Unfortunately, there is a movement back to paper and there's a trade-off. When you force people to go to a polling place and fill out paper, that's actually disenfranchising a lot of people who just cannot get to the polling place. When some people think about our state, they might not necessarily think about innovation, much less West Virginia utilizing blockchain technology for the first time in the history of the United States in an election. Any new technology, any move, any step this big, you have to start small. Um, and we started here in Montegalia County and in Harrison County in our state, the two counties um, with experienced county clerks, decades of experience, and the drive to do something innovative. I come from a military family. Uh, a number of us have been through West Point and served in the, in the Army, had a brother in the Navy. All four of my children have served as well. I think there's just been a heritage here in West Virginia of service. Access to voting is a core of our democracy. So when it comes to our uniformed services members, they don't have the same kind of access to our polling places that people here in the state do. Um, and they don't have scanners or fax machines or printers. Um, that you would need under traditional electronic ballot delivery um, processes, which is why we were willing to break down the barriers and do something that's completely new. Our partnership with Votes has allowed us to offer the same opportunities that our voters here stateside have to our military men and women overseas. For the first time, the blockchain lets you implement a mechanism where you don't have to trust the creator of the software. It is basically running on the power of mathematics. For the West Virginia election, we use the platform known as Hyperledger, which has been uh, championed by IBM, several governments around the world, and is an alternative approach which lets you create governance, create um, open structures, and still uh, utilize the immense power of the blockchain. It is nearly impossible to alter forge or erase something once it's on the blockchain. That's pretty good. 
The difference between a public and a private chain is all about the possibility of censorship. The only way you can have a system where it's impossible to cheat is if there's no one controlling the system. We're in a world today where you're seeing attempts to build essentially like virtual private networks off of blockchain. They may work for a while, as did you know, Prodigy and CopyServe, but eventually the scale economies of a public blockchain will subsume other things as applications as opposed to private separate infrastructure. We can start challenging the notions of the democracies with a new possibility, with a new model. Some of the strong men from around the world don't want to see Western-style democracy where people control the government. It's we the people. It's incumbent upon us to keep changing and enhancing our concept of democracy. Regardless of your political affiliation, if more people vote, if everybody votes, that's a fair fight.